it is not surprising that the TJRC report keeps popping up time and again. The report was a product of the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission established as part of Agenda 4 of the National Accord after the post-election violence in 2008 seeking to provide long-term solutions. So let's revisit the highlights of that report as compiled by Duncan Hayemba. I am submitting to you the report of the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission this was in May 2013 when the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission handed over its final report to President Uhuru Kenyatta, a report whose implementation process is yet to be set in motion by Parliament. This report tulipokea na kibaki tukiwa sisi tunandoka kwa serikali. Sasa nyingi mwekao kwa serikali kuli kwa bunge miaka mne. Badu nasema watu utaweka kwa bunge ijadiliwe. Tulikuwa tunangoja serikali iweke pesa ya uh, kuimplement your report. The Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission was set up to investigate historical injustices, including extrajudicial killings and economic marginalization and other human rights violations committed in the country since 1963, a process that saw over 40,000 individuals testify before the commission. During his second State of the Nation address in March 2015, President Uhuru Kenyatta apologized for the wrongs committed by past regimes. My brothers and sisters, to move forward as one nation, I stand before you today on my own behalf, that of my government and all past governments to offer the sincere apology of the government of the Republic of Kenya to all our compatriots for all past wrongs. The report has also recommended need for reasonable compensation of all victims of historical injustices. I have instructed the Treasury to establish a fund of 10 billion shillings over the next three years to be used for restorative justice. In the final report, the chairman himself is reported to have been mentioned adversely with foreign commissioners in the team, Gertrude Chawatama, Ron Sly, and Bahanu Dinka, lodging complaints alleging that the office of the president had doctored the final report. Their dissenting opinion on the land chapter was controversially left out of the final report. In the last general election, the land question was a hotly contested subject. It dominated the country's first ever presidential debate with the Jubilee candidate Uhuru Kenyatta finding himself on the receiving end from other candidates over land owned by the Kenyatta family. Coast province from Lamu to Lungalunga have been treated very unfairly by the three governments <clears throat> because even titles mostly are given to upcountry people. I have said severally, I have never, save for the rumor been accused of any impropriety in terms of grabbing anybody's land. Land that we own as a family is land that has been purchased on the basis of willing buyer and willing seller. At no instance whatsoever. However, we do recognize that there is need to deal with this problem, not from an emotional point of view, but from a practical point of view. One of the problems facing Kenya in the history and today is this whole idea of local elites taking over resources that belong to community. For example, when you bring the concept of willing buyer, willing seller, how exactly do you do that in absence of safeguards in, in a country where economic disparities are huge? Peter Taveta, his family and one Basile Criticals literally own most of the land. And recently, he is reported as having given the Tavetas, 4,000 acres. Now, how would he deal with that issue? Because the Tavetas need to be rescued from being squatters in their own place. And these are the issues that we are raising when we talk of a person whose family owns maybe the largest tracts of land. Half may be an exaggeration to drive the point home, but the largest landowner, how do you resolve that? In the previous parliament of which Ms. Karua was a member, I think that question was raised, and the answer is clear. 
and the question was raised as to who are the largest landowners in this country. My name and the name of any member of my family never appeared on that list. So I think we need to clarify that first. The second aspect is it is indeed true we do own land in Taita Taveta. We own 30,000 acres as a family in Taita Taveta. He's mentioned it, that's correct. But in no way do we own, as they say, the province. The largest landowner in Taita Taveta County is actually the government of the Republic of Kenya and also the trust lands that are there. If Kiambu, where he comes from, uh, the residents are complaining. Can he take charge of this country and work on land issues in the 47 counties? It is not just in Kiambu that we have a problem with land. We have a problem in land in every single one of our 47 counties. And I believe that is why land was a critical component of our new constitution. That is why we have now the National Land Commission that has been given the mandate to look into issues of historical justice to look into issues of grabbed land, to look into issues of land use. In defense of my brother, Uhuru Kenyatta, he was just an innocent inheritor. He did not commit the original sin. And I think the country should sympathize with him. But um, the issue is that there was a betrayal of the freedom fighters, the original the, uh, freedom uh, the struggle. Those who sacrificed most were completely abandoned by the leadership. And that's the reason why this issue has remained a contentious issue for all this time. The Jubilee regime has tried tackling the land problem, especially at the coast, with President Uhuru Kenyatta giving out land titles to squatters in Mombasa and Lamu counties. Latest efforts being January this year, whereby squatters encroaching on the controversial expansive Waitik land in Likoni were given titles. The TJRC report touched on many subjects, but land remains the most emotive of them all. And just like in the last general election, the land question will no doubt be a big political fight, and the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission's report could be the flashpoint. Duncan Hamba, KT News.